30 um, articles in the United Nations uh, Human Rights uh, List. And I identified that for 11 of those, Bitcoin can be a tool that enforces it or supports um, that human right. And we were just speaking about uh, the right to privacy, which is an article in the Human Rights uh, Convention list. And also there is the presumption of innocence. And I want to talk about the presumption of innocence as a human right and how we don't have that anymore in today's world. Um, together with um, that we don't have any privacy anymore because and also the goal of it seems every government in the world is to basically have a complete picture of all what we do like um, with all the KYC regulation and the anti-money laundering uh, rules and regulations it's now the time that we as people who want to use some form of money or some form of financial account and even Bitcoin, uh, we need to identify ourselves upfront. Um, so basically, um, we are not innocent anymore. Uh, we have to show that we, we have to give them our identity so um, that we can prove our innocence all the time. So it's not anymore that uh, they go for the criminals uh, who might do some illegal stuff before they use money or after they used it um, and have to prove that they made something uh, which is illegal. No, now it's us who have to prove ourselves up front. And also recently there was um, this um, court case in the Netherlands uh, last week where the software developer of Tornado Cash um, has been convicted to more than five years uh, of imprisonment. And one of the explainers of the judge, why uh, that happened was that uh, they said that the developer basically um, made some decisions to work on that code and in the knowledge that maybe also people who are doing illegal things can use or will use his software. So basically, it's like um, a knife manufacturer, for instance, um, is selling a knife and someone is killing someone with that knife. Uh, I never heard that a knife manufacturer or a gun manufacturer was imprisoned for because they also know that someone can kill someone with it. Yeah. So um, this is very, very worrying to me, as I said before, because it also um, takes the freedom of speech from us, uh, which then takes freedom of association, because if I can't express my, um, my will or my opinions through money, because if I donate to a cause, I express my opinion. And um, if I can't express my opinion with money, I can also not uh, associate and get together with others to demonstrate or protest uh, against um, unjust, some, something that's unjust or against police brutality like it happened in Nigeria where Bitcoin was then really used like with BTC Pay Server, the feminist coalition was able to uh, receive donations from abroad again to support the protests against police brutality. After that, the fact that the when they first started to using the banking system, the central bank immediately shut their uh, banking account. So um, they remembered there's something like Bitcoin and set up their own PTC pay server. So Bitcoin um, enforces a lot of human rights, um, also like freedom of movement. Yeah, um, that's also, uh, you said uh, Bitcoin is superior to real estate. Um, I agree for me because um, with Bitcoin, I'm very mobile. You can take your Bitcoin anywhere and you only need to remember 12 words if, if it's uh, hard on hard and you need to move fast because maybe um, there's a war or some sort of catastrophe in your country and, and you need to leave. So um, Bitcoin is really, how shall I say, it's the backbone of, of or the embodiment of human rights. 
Um, you can't do that with any other cryptocurrency because all those other cryptocurrencies they are in a way centralized. Uh, they can be shut down um, and, and only Bitcoin um, can't be. And so it's our only defense tool, actually. And regarding privacy, yes, uh, we need more privacy on chain. We need more possibilities to to hide our traces and this is not because we want to hide something from uh, our society and from from the government in that sense you know i mean i see the government and authorities in my country as um these are they are here to the service of the people <laughs> not the other way around and if they do a good service to my country and to my living standards um then I pay taxes. I can also pay them in Bitcoin, um, but I don't uh, see why I need to pay a capital gains tax and um, a tax on my income with the same currency, which you have to do now in, in, in Austria, for instance. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, things to be said about that. And um, it's right that like Yuval Harari, uh, the uh, author, um, recently said, that um, Bitcoin shows, basically, in my words, I would say it shows that people have lost trust in their governments, which is actually true. And um, but it gives us uh, hope and we don't need to trust the Bitcoin system because uh, it has it, it, its own rules and no human interaction can change them to their own good. And that's the great thing about Bitcoin. And I think it's um, something that so many people still uh, can't grasp. And I know that a lot of people are also very scared. So interestingly enough, um, if I talk to people about Bitcoin in Europe, um, most people, the first thing they say is, it scares me. Um, I, I don't know how it works. That's the first thing. And the next thing is what happens to our, to our society, to our um, society, society, um, societal contract. Yeah. So people are afraid of the new. Um, they justify the system that they have at the moment because actually they arrange themselves with it. And so I think, um, People who are already in Bitcoin, in self-custody Bitcoin, are those who, who like Andreas Antonopoulos once said, uh, Bitcoin is punk. Yeah, So we are still the punks. It's still very early. And I hope that people more and more realize that Bitcoin is for anyone and uh, it doesn't favor the crypto bros. The crypto bros are in shitcoins, uh, in shitcoin land. Hmm. And that's something different than Bitcoin from my perspective. Hello, my name is Anita Posch. And if you liked that video, please subscribe to my channel now to inspire me to create more content like this. And if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, then sign up for my free weekly Bitcoin newsletter at anita.link news.